Hello and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic in Her Office. Are you ready for some axioms? We've already got the bookkeeping rules and the transformation rules, but as we noted in previous videos, this doesn't allow us to actually combine terms that are not already combined in our premises. So we can't get that magic combination of the major term and the minor term together in a single proposition, which would allow us to actually prove syllogisms. So what we've got right now isn't very helpful. That's where the axioms come in. So let me bring up my whiteboard so that we can, first of all, remind ourselves what the axioms are. We've got four of them. Barbara, Shay Laurent, Darie, and Ferio. So each of these are first figure syllogisms. So they're always going to be of the form P copula M, M copula S, conclusion P copula S. And then the only way that they differ is what goes into the copula. So in Barbara, it's A, 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 universal affirmative the whole way. Che Laurent is P, E, M, M, A, S, P, E, S. Dari is P, A, M, M, I, S, therefore P, I, S. And Ferio is P, E, M, M, I, S. And from this, we can conclude P-O-S. So these are the axioms that we have. And the rules that we will introduce are just formalizing how it is that we can apply the axiom in the context of a syllogistic proof. Basically, the idea is if you have your two premises in the right order, so major premise, then minor premise, written down one right after another in a proof, well, then you can write down the corresponding conclusion. So let me give you the rule for applying Barbara. I'm just going to call it Barbara. This says that for any two lines, I and I plus one, so they have to occur immediately next to each other in a proof. Both of these are going to occur in the proof earlier than the line that we're gonna draw the conclusion on. It's gotta work in a linear fashion. So for any lines i and i plus one that are both less than line n, if term one, a term two occurs on line i and term two, a term three, occurs on line i plus one, then we can write on line n the wholly new radically different proposition t1 a t3. And the annotation for that is going to be Barbara, and the two premises that we're citing. So lines i and i plus one. So what it would look like is something like this. We've got our scope line, we've got various things going on up here, we've got premises, possibly transformation rules, bookkeeping rules. Here's actually where reiteration can come into play because sometimes you might have the propositions you need just not in the right order. So reiteration can allow you to put them into the order in order to be able to actually apply your axiom. But just to say specifically what we've got here, if we have line i that has t1 a t2, again with some annotation, we don't know what, i plus 1 gets us t2 a t3, again with some annotation. And then at some point later on in the proof at line n, we can put in this Annotation, Barbara, I, I plus one. Now, speaking abstractly, we can write this conclusion down at any point in the proof after the two uh, premises occur paired together with each other. In principle, 
what's going to happen is we will have our two premise pairs and then we'll apply the axiom right away. So in most cases, this is going to end up being lines i, i plus one, and i plus two. But that's Barbara. The other rules are going to be exactly the same. So unfortunately, what we will have to do is erase Barbara so that I can walk you through Che Laurent, Dari, and Ferio. But we will keep the schematics at the top so that you can see that this is going to work basically exactly the same for each of the application rules. So, Che Laurent. The rule to apply Che Laurent says if you have on line I, a proposition of the form T1, E, T2, and on line I plus one, you have T2, A, T3, then on line N, where again, I and I plus one are both earlier in the proof than N, we can write term one, E, term three. And the ju justification for this will be Chalerant, line I, and I plus one. So to draw the schematics, scope line, various other things, line I, where we have the first premise with some justification, Line I plus one, immediately after it, we have the second premise, T2, A, T3, with some justification. And then from this, via trailer, and we can derive the conclusion, T1, E, T3. Justification, trailer, and I, I plus one. Doing the uh, axioms for the, the rules for applying Dari and Ferio are going to be exactly the same. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to erase the relevant bits. So let's take out Chalerent, take out what we have on line I, what we have on line I plus one, what we're allowed to write down and the justification. So other than that, everything else is going to be the same. So I will just put in what's new in order to give you the rule for Dari. So Dari says, if you have on line I something of the form term one, A, term two, and on the very next line, I plus one, you have term two, I, term three, then on line N, where N occurs after I and I plus one, we can write term one, I, term three, and the justification for that is Dari, I, I plus one. So what we would have here, term one, A, term two, on the next line, term two, I, term three, and down at line N, term one, I, term three, with the annotation Dari, I, I plus one. Ferio, by now you can, you can presume already what this is going to look like, but just to show you for completeness' sake, we will erase what we have for Dari, get rid of all of these little blue bits, and then what does Ferio look like? Ferio says, if you have on line I something of the form term one, E, term two, and on line I plus one, you have term two, I, term three. Well, then you're in a position where you can apply the Ferio axiom. So on line N, or again, line N happens after I and I plus one, we are allowed to write term one, O, term three, with the justification Ferio, I, I plus one. So just to put it into our little schematic form, if we have on line I, term one, E, term two, 
term two, uh, I term three on immediately the next line, then at some point later on in the proof at line N, we are allowed to write down term one, O term three, with the justification ferio I, I plus one. Now, quite often, this is where our proof will end because we'll have gotten to the conclusion that we wanted to reach. However, depending on what you have just written down here, so not what I have in Ferio because it has an O copulate and we don't have any transformation that allows us to do anything with O's, but say what I had written down was the conclusion of Dari, P-I-S. It is possible at this point for us to then apply more of the transformation rules again. So for instance, after an application of Dari, I could then change it to SIP through simple conversion on line N, whatever line that happens to be, and so on and so forth. So don't think that just because you've applied your axiom, you've reached the end. You might not have. You might have, but you might not have. So it is still possible to apply transformation rules to the things that we've derived using our axioms in order to get to the conclusion it is that we want to get to. Now, we are really, really close to being able to prove all the syllogisms we want to prove between the bookkeeping rules, the transformation rules, and the rules about how to apply axioms. Close, but not quite there. With these rules, we would be able to prove almost all of the syllogisms, but not two of them. There are two syllogisms where we have to introduce a new not just a new rule, but a new method of reasoning in order to be able to derive both of them. And that is going to be the hypothetical method or the, um, the, the hypothetical rule, we can call it. That's what we will talk about probably in two videos times, because what I want to talk about next is just show some examples of how we can derive various syllogisms given the rules that we do have. So setting aside the two that we need the hypothetical method for, what can we do with the basic set of rules? So if you want to know more about that, if you want to see some of the proofs in action, well, come back and join me during my next video. I look forward to seeing you then. Cheers.